Okay, so today we're talking about rhombi and squares. Um, and a rhombus is a quadrilateral with four sides congruent. So I've got that marked here. All four sides are congruent to each other. The plural for rhombus is rhombi, okay? Um, now, because all four sides are equal, what's true about the opposite side? If all four sides are equal, our opposite sides are congruent. And all, if opposite sides are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, which means that the rhombus holds all the properties of the parallelogram, right? So obviously, your opposite sides are congruent. They're also going to be parallel. What about the opposite angle? They're congruent. And what about the diagonal? They bisect each other. They bisect each other. Okay. If you draw one of them, it creates two congruent triangles, right? Uh, what about your consecutive angles? They're supplementary. Okay. So your rhombus holds all those properties, plus it has four right angles. I mean, it has uh, four congruent sides. It has, it has all the properties of the parallelogram, and all four sides are congruent to each other. Plus, it has a couple of other ones. And if a parallelogram is a rhombus, and its diagonals are perpendicular. Okay. So the diagonals create four right angles right here. So they bisect each other, and they um, are perpendicular to each other. Also, they bisect um, a pair of opposite angles. So if you were to draw both of them, um, you can see here in the blue that this angle PQX and angle RQX are congruent, and PSX and RSX are congruent. So that diagonal bisects the opposite um, angles, as does the other one, and SPX and QPX are congruent, and SRX and QRX are congruent which is denoted in red, okay? So, the diagonals bisect each other, they're perpendicular, and they bisect the opposite angles, okay? So it does all those things, plus have all the, all the properties of the uh, parallelogram. So, let's um, do a couple of problems here. It says, use rhombus QRST and the given information to find the value of each variable. So it says, find Y if the measure of angle 3 is Y squared minus 31. What do we know about angle 3? It's 90 degrees, right? It's a right angle because those diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So I'm going to set y squared minus 31 equal to 90. Okay? And I'm going to solve in this case since it's just a y squared, not a y squared and a y. I'm going to uh, solve for y squared. Add 31 to both sides. And so then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And what is the square root of 121? 11. Isn't it also negative 11? Yes. Anytime you have an equation that has um, taken the second power, it's got two roots, two, two solutions. And so 11 is a negative 11. If I put negative and 11 in there, will it work out okay? Yes, but your square becomes positive, right? Okay, so you are actually have two answers there. Okay. Still have diagonals. The next one says find the measure of angle 1. Yes. Okay, so in the next one it says that the measure, uh, find the measure of angle 1 if the measure of angle RST is 106. So this angle right here is 106. And I want to find angle 1. Alright, so what can we do here? Okay, so you're going to look at the, you're going to find this big angle right here, okay? So you're going to do 180 minus 106, uh, which would be this whole big angle here is going to be 74, right? Okay, and so what's true about angle 1 and angle 2 is this is a um, rhombus. It says bisect, right? So the measure of angle 1 then would be 74 divided by 2, which is 37 degrees. Another thing that you might want to look at here 
And if this big angle is 106, this is just another possible way to do it. If this big angle here is 106, um, each one of these are going to be 53. And this right here is a right angle. So then these are going to be complementary, which means this is 37, and then these two are congruent, which means that's 37. So you can do that either way. There's two options there for you to, to solve that problem. All right. Here's another one. It says if PS is 5 and ST is 13, we want to find PT. This is the part right there. Okay, but you have to know it's a parallelogram. 
we have to show that one pair of opposite angles are bisect. And then another one is one pair of consecutive sides of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is the rhombus. Okay? Um, so basically, if I can show C, I know it is a parallelogram, I can know that. And if you can show that your um, one pair of consecutive sides are congruent, then you can say that it's a parallelogram. And it's really important that, um, that you recognize it's a parallelogram first. Like if we go back up to this one where we show that the diagonals are perpendicular in a kite, we're going to talk about tomorrow. In a kite, the diagonals are perpendicular also, but it's not a parallelogram. Right? So in order to use this test, I have to you know, be able to show or be told it's a parallelogram and then show it's a parallelogram. All right. So we have two more I need to do here. And in this one, it's an easy proof. It says um, JKLN is a parallelogram. So we know this big figure here is a parallelogram. And it says that JKL is isosceles. Okay, so that's an isosceles triangle. And I want to show that JKLN is a rhombus. Okay, so I know it's a parallelogram. What can I get from the fact that this is an isosceles triangle? Okay. So these two sides here are congruent, and I can use the definition of isosceles to do that. Okay? So if this is a parallelogram, if those two pairs of adjacent sides are congruent, what does that make JKLN? A rhombus. We're going back to this theorem up here that says, uh, oh, I skipped one. Back to it. Um, if one pair of consecutive sides of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rhombus. Okay? I'll come back to this diagram. All right, so that's all we really need, just three steps here. K, J, K, L, M is a parallelogram, and triangle J, K, L is isosceles. That's a given. From the fact that I have an isosceles triangle, I'm going to say that J, K, and L, K are congruent. And that is definition of isosceles triangle. And so then that's enough to prove that JKLM is a rhombus. And again, I'm going back to that theorem. It says that if ways that you could prove um, you have a rhombus, but how can you prove that you have a square? Okay, well, if you can show that a quadrilateral is both a rectangle and a rhombus, then you can say it's a square. Okay, it has to have the properties of the rectangle and the rhombus, all right? And so however you want to do it. To prove you have a rectangle, you can show, if you know it's a parallelogram, you can show the diagonals are congruent. Um, you can show that the consecutive sides are perpendicular. To show that you have a rhombus, you can use any of those ways that we talked about above. A one pair of opposite angles are bisected, um, the diagonals are perpendicular, or what was the other one? Uh, a pair of consecutive sides are congruent, right? Okay, but again, in, you have to know, um, to use any of those, you have to know it's a parallelogram to begin with. So let's do one like that. Determine whether parallelogram ABCD is a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square. Okay, I've already got this drawn here. Okay. All right, so let's start out by looking to see if it's a rhombus. It tells us it's a parallelogram. That's awesome. That means we don't have to prove it's a parallelogram. Let's work for us, right? Okay, because a lot of these theorems that we talked about assume that it's a parallelogram to begin with. 
Okay, so what would be the easiest thing you think to look at to determine if it was a rhombus? We know it's a parallelogram. Yes. Okay, you can do that. So let's do that. Let's look at A, B, and B, C. Okay, so A, B, and B, C. And we're going to use the distance formula here. Um, so we're going to do 1 minus a negative 3 quantity squared plus 3 minus 1 quantity squared. And so that gives me 4 squared plus 2 squared. terms of diagonals. See if they're perpendicular, if they were opposite reciprocals. I'm a, I like slope at the distance, but, you know, either way. So, I could have shown, like I did, that the consecutive sides are congruent, or I could have looked at the diagonal and shown that they were perpendicular, they were opposite reciprocals. Either way would have proved it a rhombus, okay? All right, now I want to determine if it's a rectangle. What should we look at to determine if it's a rectangle? Yes. The diagonals, okay, what, what do we have to look at in terms of diagonals? To see if they're congruent. You might like that distance formula, don't you? Okay, so let's look at A, B, and then we'll have to look at um, B, B, and B, C. So I'm looking at A, C first. All right, and so we got 1 minus a negative 1 plus minus a negative 3, and so that gives me 2 squared plus 6 squared, which is uh, 4 plus 36, which is the square root of 14. And then I'm going to look at BD, and so that's negative 3 minus 3. Equal, right? Okay. And then what's true about the diagonals? 
they're perpendicular. What, what else do diagonals do? They bisect the opposite angles, right? Okay, and so then the square is a parallelogram that's also a rectangle and a rhombus because it has four right angles and four congruent sides. Okay, ways that we can prove that we have a rhombus, if we know it's a parallelogram, then um, uh, we can show that the diagonals are perpendicular. We can show, if we know it's a parallelogram, we can show that the diagonals bisect a pair of opposite angles. Or if a pair of consecutive sides are congruent. And okay, that's the way that I can show that it is a rhombus. But you have to go to the parallelogram first. And then to show it's a square, I have to show that it's a rectangle and a rhombus. Okay? A lot of properties, yes? Test on Friday. So you need to make sure that you know those properties. Okay? And not get them mixed up. All right, first time.